rod will be uh, kind of all over the place today, so just go ahead and pull it out, and we'll be kind of flipping uh, to a number of passages. But before we kind of dive in today, um, I, I just want to kind of do a brief update on something that we updated the church on uh, last Sunday, and, uh, and then just kind of ask us to rally around uh, this in, in prayer. So if you were here last Sunday, uh, we had mentioned that uh, by kind of a, a, by way of an, just an act of God, uh, we were invited into an opportunity. I think we have a picture of um, the school uh, and the church building. So uh, long story short is um, a church moved out of this facility. There's a vacant church uh, right down the road, um, and we happen to be uh, in good relationships with the, the people that, that own the building, and they have invited us to consider moving into that location. And, uh, and so we, we talked about all of this last week, and I just wanted to give you kind of a, a brief update. So last week we said, you know, this is something that we desire to do, but we don't want to get, you know, ahead of the Lord at all. And so this has to be uh, absolutely from Him. And so let's kind of pray to that end. And today the update is really just to continue to keep praying because we are still in talks with, uh, the, uh, with the school's board uh, and their administration and kind of working out some contracts. If, if it does go through, we'll let you guys know. And if it does go through, uh, we would likely uh, move in in the month of April and have our very first Sunday there, which is, which is great because uh, it kind of feels like we uh, are living in an apartment here and we're moving into a home. Uh, and so we're excited about the opportunity uh, with what God has provided for us. Um, but again, at the same time, uh, we, we don't want to get ahead of the Lord, and we want to invite the Lord into um, really all of these plans, and so we want to continue to pray uh, in this direction. So uh, that's just the update. Nothing's final uh, yet. Uh, it, right now, to just be completely transparent with you, it could go uh, any number of ways, and so we just want to be transparent with you, uh, but we do want to ask you to pray. So if you would, uh, just join me in a time of prayer. Uh, just bow your heads and take a moment to pray for God's favor. Um, and for God's will to be done, and then uh, I'll close this. Father in heaven, your word says that unless you build the house, the laborers labor in vain. So Father, we just come before you in um, prayer with the plans and desires of our own heart, um, seeking the desires of your heart. And so God, we do ask open-handedly uh, that you would continue to give us wisdom uh, beyond our years, beyond our experience, um, in making uh, a decision that would be ultimately for uh, the good of our city, for your name, for your fame, uh, for the joy of, uh, of your people. So God, we just ask for your wisdom. Um, and Father, we, we do pray um, over this kind of you know, next week or so, um, through all the different talks that are going to happen. We just pray that you would make it very crystal clear um, whether this is a direction you would have us to go. Um, I personally feel like it seems like it, but God, we don't want to get ahead of you in this. And so God, we entrust this opportunity um, to you. Um, and we ask that uh, your will be done. And we love you, Father. Thank you for the consideration and for the opportunity at the end of the day, we know that you're our great provider, and we trust you. It's in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. amen. All right, uh, if you're new or visiting, today we are in part two of a series called Relationship Goals. Uh, and when I think of kind of the why behind this series, I think of something that actually happened a couple of weeks ago in the world of basketball. Uh, on February 7th, the L.A. Lakers faced off against the Oklahoma City Thunder. The arena was sold out. The who's who of Hollywood was there. Why? Because if you know your basketball, this was the night 
that LeBron James would break the all-time scoring record. For nearly four decades, this record had never been touched. And with about 14 seconds left in the third quarter, LeBron James, with one fadeaway shot, wrote his name in NBA history. It was no doubt quite an achievement. But as one sports article pointed out the following day, saying, despite James's 38-point record-breaking night versus the Thunder, the Lakers still lost in a game that they desperately needed to win. And in the same way, when it comes to our relationships and how we do relationships, there's a lot of goals that we can have. But the question is, do we have the right goals? Goals that would actually help us win. Because that's the point. And, and that's what we are after in this series. So in week one, we talked about the right goals for singleness. If you were here, you heard it. But Mason did a fantastic job talking about how do we do this station of life called singleness. Next week, we're going to talk about the right goals for marriage. Today, though, uh, I want us to talk about having the right goals for dating. Yes, dating. Now, by show of hands, how many of you have been on a date in the past six months? Show of hands. Okay, good. Uh, put, the, put your hands down. Now, by show of hands, how many of you hope to go on a date in the next six months? Show of hands. You can hold them up if you're trying to find one. Now, whether you went on a date recently, uh, you want to date, or maybe not right now, the question is, why? What is the point? What's it for? Because that's what we're going to be getting after today. So let me just kind of put my cards on the table early here. Let me just say this. Today, I'm not going to talk about how to get a date, because that's easy. Just lower your standards, right? and don't get a date tonight. If you make them low enough, you could get married tonight. So instead of telling us how to get a date, I want to give us a a better starting point. Because the, the truth is, and what we need to understand, is that this impulse to kind of pair up is good. In fact, it's how God designed us to be. In Genesis chapter 2, what we see is that when God made man in his image, male and female, he made them, and it was a good thing. But then God looked down at man all alone by himself, and he said, "Uh uh-oh, it is not good for him to be alone. My translation says this brother needs help. Man does not need to be alone. Man needs a helper that is fit for him, is what the text says. So that impulse inside of us for us to pair up with another human being is a good and right desire. And statistics say that a vast majority of you want to get married. In fact, 81% of people in the United States want to get married. Statistics also say that a vast majority of people in the United States will get married. In fact, 75% of you will get married. Can someone say amen? Because you, you're hoping. <laughs> so what I, I want to talk about today is I, I want to talk about doing dating right and, and how to arrive at your destination without destroying your life in the process. So how do we get it right? What should our goals be as we consider the season, the topic, the subject of dating? Today, what I want to do is I want to give you four things. Two goals and two principles for getting dating right. And this is not a a comprehensive list by any means, but these four things come straight from the Bible, not only that, but these are four things that I wish I would have known when I was dating, and these are the same four things that I will tell my own kids in 30 years as it relates to dating. So you guys ready? Here we go. Number one, if you take notes. The first goal, if you take notes, the first thing that you need to know is this. You need to know what 
it's for. You need to know what it's for. Now, I love this question, what it's for. The reason this question matters so much is because if you don't understand what something is for, it always goes bad. It always breaks. For, for example, this is why we don't pour milk in our gas tank. This is why we don't paint our walls with hammers. I mean, could you imagine doing that? Painting your wall with a, a, a hammer, your bedroom wall. It wouldn't go well, would it? No. No, if you think about it, the wall would be all torn up and at the end of the day, you would be exhausted. Why? Because that's not what a hammer is for. Or, or what about uh, those, those gym fail videos? You, you seen any one of those? gym fail videos, people using equipment the wrong way. We watch those videos and what do we do? We, we laugh, right? We, we text it to a friend like, look at this idiot, right? Like, ever done that? Like, it looks foolish. And that's what happens to us when we don't know what something is for. We look foolish. We are exhausted and it just makes a mess of things. So to really understand what dating is for, we have to understand what anything is for. And, and to do this, we have to ask a better question. And the better question is this, that we have to ask is, what is life for? What is life for? And the Bible gives us a pretty clear answer in Habakkuk chapter 2. In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14, we get a really clear look at God's heart and what He wants, what He desires, and this is what it says. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14 says this, for the earth, that's where we are, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So friends, what's the point? What's the point here? Glory. That's the point. What God is saying here is that it's all about His glory. That all of life is all for His glory. And this isn't just some obscure passage for me to make a point for a sermon. This is all over the Bible. You want, let's go to Psalm 19. Psalm 19 verse 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims His handiwork. And then you can fast forward to the New Testament. We find it says that 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 31, which Mason read, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, underline that. Just underline that in your Bible, highlight, circle, underline that. Whatever you do, you know what that means? Whatever you do. I looked it up in the Greek. It means whatever you do. Whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, what do we do? You do it all for the glory of God. So we can conclude, we, we must conclude that everything that God has made is for His glory, from the skies above to the work of our hands, to the cup of coffee in our hands, to the steak on our plate, right? To the mountains to mates. It is all for His glory. So everything that God has made, to say it another way, is a means to an end. And that even includes dating. So what is dating? Great question. I'm glad you asked. Well, you already know this. You're, you guys are smart people. You already know that it's not in the Bible. The idea, the concept of dating is not a biblical concept in and of itself because it's a new thing. It's a new thing. In fact, it's only about 100 years old, this concept of what we in modern times call dating. It's a new thing. So what is it? I'll go back to what I said earlier. It is just a means to an end in two ways. Number one, to get married. That's true. But that is also a means to an end. And what is that end? We just said it. It is to glorify God. So what is dating? What is it? Here's my definition. Dating is a process. Here's how I wrote it in my notes. What is dating for? Dating is for evaluating who you will glorify God with for the rest of your life in a marriage covenant. I'll say it again. What is dating? 
what it's dating for. Dating is for evaluating who you will glorify God with for the rest of your life in a marriage covenant. That is what dating is for. Now, I'll be real honest. This was the farthest thing from my mind when I was dating. And maybe it it was for you too, but I promise you that knowing what it's really for will save you money, time, and a lot of heartache. Not only that, but it will save you from all the typical questions that I get about dating. And all of them seem to have the same theme. How far is too far? Ever been there? Where's the line here? And the question and answer to what it's for swallows all of those questions. So admittedly, if you come up to me for dating advice, you will love my answer or you will hate it because I will always bring it back to what is it for? And what is it for? Dating is for evaluating who you will glorify God with for the rest of your life in a marriage covenant. So how far is too far? Wrong question. Right question, is this really glorifying to God? Is this giving God the most glory? So real practical stuff, if you have that question, how far is too far, you have just told on yourself. You have said, I want to paint the wall with a hammer, Bryson. I'm considering going against God's good design. So can I just say, don't do that. You'll be much happier inside of God's good design than on the outside. So number one, you have to know what it's for. And now that you know what it's for, you can then begin to kind of reverse engineer, work backwards on some things and begin to think about the second thing that you should consider, the second goal that you should have. And that is this, what to look for. You need to know not just what it's for, but you need to know what you're looking for. Now, I want to challenge us for a moment on how we typically think about what to look for. Because if you're like me, the first thing that I did when I was considering, you know, dating and considering marrying, considering a mate, what I did was I got out a journal. Maybe you did this too. And I just kind of listed out what I wanted in my perfect mate. Anybody do that? I want this, right? Just had like three, four, five pages of this is what I want in anybody. Anybody else? And what we're really doing when we do that is we are customizing our order like we do at Starbucks. And we have unknowingly trained ourselves to be a consumer and a customer instead of looking for someone, a person made in the image of God to do life with. We have customized a product to serve us, and now God is our waiter who is going to take our order. And that is not the way that it works. So are you saying that we shouldn't care about writing down a list? No, I'm not saying that either. But I am saying we need to realize what we are doing. We need to realize that we can easily slip into a consumer mindset. So no, it's not a bad thing to kind of list out what you want, the desires of your heart. But what I can tell you from experience is we don't really know what we want. I don't care how intuitive you are or how type A you are, the human Heart is a fickle thing, man. So what do we do? How how do we do, how how should we pick? What should we look for? Let me give you two things. Two C's. Number one, Christ as their supreme and superior desire. What should we look for? Christ as their supreme and superior desire. Desire. Do they really love Jesus? Not say they are a Christian. That's easy. It's easy to get a bumper sticker, right? It's easy to buy a Bible. It's easy to get a cross tattoo. But do they really have evidence in their life that they really, really love Jesus? So number one, Christ as supreme and superior desire. The second thing I would say is community community, do they have real biblical community where they are encouraged, where they are challenged? Do do they have and receive godly counsel now? Because if they don't care about it now, they're not going to care about it later. So number one, Christ is supreme 
And number two is what I would just say, biblical community. Are they engaged in the life of their church? Do they serve in the life of their church? Now notice I, I didn't say anything about the physical makeup or personality. Why? Because gravity wins. How many, no, no, I'm talking about gravity wins. Looks will change. Personalities will change. But convictions will remain. So how do we get it right? Number one, we need to know what it's for. Number two, we need to know what to look for. So that's kind of your north star. Now let me give you two principles as you pursue dating. Number one, and this is a big one. You might want to write this one down. Your present will be your past which will be present in your future. In other words, what you do now will show up later. The Bible calls this sowing and reaping. The principle here is that what you sow, you will reap. So if you sow corn now, you will reap corn later. You're not going to reap tomatoes. It's not how it works. What you plant will be produced. So if you're... um, If you're a recreational dater and you hook up and shack up, now that will show up later. You will have to deal with that later, emotionally, physically, spiritually, relationally. Or or what about pornography? Same thing. Forgiveness issues, selfishness. What you do now will show up later. But it also, if you prepare now, it will show up later. Because what you do in the present will be your past, which will be present in your future. So real practical, this, this applies to everybody, right? What are some things in your life that you don't want in your life a year from now? If you're single now, what are some things in your life right now that you don't want to show up in your dating life later? If you're dating right now, what are some things in your life right now that you don't want to show up in your first year of marriage? Uh, One of the things that we have the privilege of doing, my wife and I, is we've had the privilege of doing a lot of of premarital counseling. And uh, I've gotten to marry a a lot of people, a lot of people in our church um, recently. And one of the things that I really want to stress, I really want to get across to the couples, there's not even like a big session on it, but it's just one thing I want them to know, I want you to know, is that when people get married, especially in the first year of marriages, you're going to have problems, okay, right? It's coming. But the problems that you have aren't necessarily marriage problems. I would even say this way, you don't really have marriage problems in that first year, in that second. What you have is you have single people problems that you brought into your marriage. Make sense? just goes back to what we were saying. What you do now will show up later. And this is real practical stuff. Me and my wife were talking about this uh, yesterday. And she just simply says, man, it boils down to just living a good life now. But what boils down to? Living a good life now so that you will get to enjoy the blessings of a good life later. Does that make sense? Good, we'll move on to number two. So principle number one, what you do now will show up later. Principle number two, you need to know this. Your companion cannot be your covering. Your companion cannot be your covering. In other words, don't look for someone to do for you what only God can do for you. This is something that I'm still learning as a married man. My wife Marley cannot satisfy or provide for me in every way. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 25, we'll talk more about this next week. It says that we were naked and unashamed. This was before sin came into the world. It's just us and God in paradise. We were naked and unashamed, but that did not last long at all. In Genesis chapter 3, it says sin entered the world and it broke the world. It severed our relationship with God. It severed our relationship with one another, 
our first parents, what did they do? Because they sinned, they ran from God because they were ashamed. And the same is true for us because of sin. We now live naked and ashamed. And we are spending our lives looking for someone, for something to cover us. This is true whether you're dating or not. But we can easily spend our lives looking for someone or something to give us our worth, to give us our value, to give us acceptance, to see us to the bottom, to know us completely, to love us completely. And the truth is your companion, your date, your mate, your friend, your spouse cannot be your covering. There is no one or no thing that will cover you and fill in all of the gaps and all of the holes in your heart. Only God can do that. Only God can do that. To say it like this, this is how I wrote it in my notes. The soulmate that you're, you're really looking for is not out there. The soulmate you are really looking for is Jesus. It's Jesus. In fact, I love how Jonathan McReynolds writes this in his song. In the chorus, he says this, What I lack, talking about Jesus, you are full of. Where I'm broken, you are whole. What I'm doubting, you are sure of. So I'll trust the lover, the lover of my soul. What I confess, you will cover. What I let go of, you'll control. Lord, my hope is in no other. I trust the lover, the lover of my soul. See, only Jesus, only Jesus, friends, can be your covering. So how do we get it right. Two goals, two principles. How do we get it right? Number one, you've got to know what it's for. Number two, you've got to know what you're looking for. Christ as supreme. Community, strong, biblical community. Number three, you've got to know that what you do now will show up later. So make necessary changes now. Repent of things now. Start living a loving and good life now. And then number four, you've got to know that your companion, your date, your mate, your spouse will never, ever be able to do for you what only God can do. So, how do we end? I wanted to leave some time today just knowing the nature of this message, I, I want us to end today by, by just taking some time to pray and to reflect. Now, I'm going to put our main verse back on the screen. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. It says, Whatever you do, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. And no matter your station in life right now, we all, can pray this prayer and simply ask the Lord to show us where we can glorify Him more. So what I want us to do is I want us to take some time around that. We're going to go ahead and put the verse on the screen. I'm going to turn the time over to you. We're going to take, take three or four minutes here and just pray and I'll come, come up and close this. The time is yours. So take some time to pray and to consider this verse.
Gracious Heavenly Father, Spirit of the living God, thank You for Your Word. Thank You for Your truth, for Your design and Your direction, and for caring about our ultimate good and our ultimate joy. Father, I want to pray over my friends today just as they're wrestling with your glory in their life, no matter their station, singleness, dating, waiting, married. Father, would you continue to reveal to us those areas where we can glorify you more and more and more because when glory goes up, joy comes down. So, Father, would you reveal those areas to us as we continue to worship you? Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to do for us what we could not do for ourselves and what no one else or nothing else could ever do. Thank you for being our covering. We bless you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen.